to introduce the topic that you know that ascites is basically the term has arrived from the Greek word which means ascos, the meaning of which is a bag or sack. Ascites is basically a pathological fluid collections within the peritoneal cavity. So if you see in the normal healthy male, there is actually no fluid or very little amount of fluid in the interpretive cavity. Whereas in case of female, based on the period of menstruation cycle, there may have some amount of fluid in the peritoneal cavity at the tune of around 20 ml of fluid can there in the peritoneal cavity. Now if you go for the pathological pathophysiological aspects of ascites, Ascites is basically that accumulations of the ascitic fluid that occurs, uh, which indicate that there is state of total sodium and water excess in the body. Now, it, most of the time, this collections of ascitic fluid occurs because of portal hypertension in around 75% of the cases. In the rest, 25% of the cases, maybe because of some other factor, which are in, not related with portal hypertension or it is also known as non-portal hypertension related ascites. The common conditions are more be because of infection or maybe inflammatory conditions or infiltrative conditions like malignancies. Now there are three theories has been uh, described in relation with pathogenesis of uh, ascites which is uh, known as the underfilling theory, the overfilling theory and also there is peripheral arterial vasodilatation. Now, in case of underfilling theory, what is said that uh, there is inappropriate sequestration of fluid within the splanchnic vascular vein due to portal hypertension. So, portal hypertension leads to actually splanchnic vasodilatations. So, there is inappropriate uh, uh, retention of the fluid in the splanchnic vessels that leads to actually reduced effective arterial circulation. So, there is reduced effective renal circulation as well that will lead to activation of the RAS system and that will cause more retention of sodium and water and it will be accumulated in the peritoneal cavity that is what is the underfilling theory now another is the overfilling theory where actually there is inappropriate renal retention of sodium and water even in the absence of volume depletion there is no volume depletion here but still there is more retention of sodium and water in the kidney and uh, that is, it will cause an intravascular hypervolemia rather than hypovolemia in cirrhosis because in most of the time cirrhosis, the, the intravascular volume is low, though the total volume may be increased, but most of the time the intravascular volume is low. But here, there is intravascular hypervolemia rather than hypovolemia in the overfilling theory. The another mechanism, the theory that has been mentioned is the peripheral arterial vasodilatation. Now, how it happens is once there is portal hypertension, this will lead to splanchnic arterial vasodilatation predominantly and also generalized vasodilatation also occurs to some extent. Now, because of this vasodilatation, there will be reduction in the effective renal circulation. At the same time, portal hypertension can also stimulate more release of nitric oxide synthesis. And these nitric oxides are the sodilators, so they will cause dilatation of the splanchnic as well as peripheral vessels. They will also ultimately lead to reduction of the effective renal circulation. And there will be activation of the RAS system, which will cause again retention of sodium and water, and there will be collections of the peripheral fluid. These are the basic theories, but again, uh, this theory has been described mostly in relation with uh, uh, chronic liver disease, but there are some other conditions also like where there can have peritoneal involvement like it may be because of infection in the form of bacteria or maybe uh, uh, microbacterial tuberculosis or it may be because of some malignant infiltrations where most of the time there is more of extrusions from the peritoneal cavity than the peritoneal uh, what I call peritoneum or from the other uh, uh, mass lesions that the extrusions in the peritoneal cavity and they may also cause fluid collections of the peritoneal cavity. Now there are some other contributing factors which are there. Uh, where you can see the cases with uh, ascites. One of the important uh, uh, contributing factors is hypoalbuminemia. As you know, that albumin it maintains the intraarterial oncotic pressure. Now, once there is hypoalbuminemia, there will be reduction in the oncotic pressure. Because of this reduction of the oncotic pressure, the fluid retaining capacity within the uh, within the vessel will reduce, and that will ultimately lead to you know leakage of the fluid from the vascular area to the 
extravascular area like peritoneal cavity. So, because of the lack of the oncotic reduction in the oncotic pressure, the LV fluid will accumulate there in the peritoneal cavity. Again, in coronary liver disease, this is one of the conditions where there is most of the time there is increase in uh, uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline. So, this will also cause a res activation and then be again will cause a further accumulations of sodium and water in the peritoneal cavity and that is one of the important contributing factor that leads to collections of the fluid in the peritoneal cavity. Now what are the etiological factor in case of cystis? What are the important issues? There can have you know uh, conditions where the peritoneum may be absolutely normal and there is development of ascites and there can have some situation where the peritoneum is some having some problem maybe in the form of inflammations or infection or some infiltrations there in the peritoneum. So if you think about the uh, normal peritoneum and there is collections of the fluid in the peritoneal cavity then uh, uh, we will we'll also have to know one important issue that is known as SAC well. SAC is basically a serum ascitic albumin gradient that means we will have to check the serum albumin level minus the peritoneal fluid albumin level and that forms a gradient that is what is known as serum ascitic albumin gradient. Now if uh, the peritoneum is normal and this uh, sac value is more than 1.1 gram per deciliter that indicates that means the serum albumin is the amount which is there and serum uh, and the peritoneal uh, albumin will be lower. So, if you minus uh, from uh, deduct the uh, peritoneal albumin from the serum albumin, the value is more than 1.1. In other words, you can simply you can think of that the peritoneal fluid will have lesser amount of albumin uh, in, in comparison to the other group where the same value is less than 1.1, though it is not always true. So, if the sac value is more than 1.1 and that is normal peritoneum, so most of the time it is because of the poor hypertension and the causes are most of the time it's because of either cirrhosis of liver. It can also be seen in some non cirrhotic conditions also like alcoholic hepatitis, fulminant hepatic failure, in some cases like massive hepatic metastasis also where the sac value may be more than 1.1 gram per deciliter. And can also be seen in case of congestive heart failure, constructive pericarditis, tricuspid insufficiency, as well as Bacheri syndrome as well. Now, uh, in normal peri uh, peritoneum, but if the sac value is earlier was sac value more than 1.1, here the sac value can be less than 1.1, and it is if it is associated with hypoalbuminemia, means serum albumin is also low. In that condition, sac value less than 1.1 and albumin, serum albumin is also low, then you have to think of some important causes like it can be because of nephrotic syndrome, protein losing antropathy, or it may be severe malnutrition with anasarca. So these are the three important, very important issues where the sac value may be less than 1.1 and at the same time the serum albumin will be low. Still, the peritoneum is normal. Again, if the peritoneum is normal and the sac value is less than 1.1 again, but what are the other miscellaneous conditions other than hypoalbumin? This patient is not having hypoalbumin, maybe, but sac value is less than 1.1. The other conditions can have, like in the form of chylasocytis, or it can be pancreatic ascites, maybe biliary ascites, nephrogenic ascites, or urine. Ascites. In these conditions, also we will get sac value less than 1.1 with normal peritoneum. Now we have talked about the normal peritoneum with high sac value and low sac value. Now there can have also I mean, abnormal peritoneum or the peritoneum is diseased. Now here the sac value it is less than 1.1. The common conditions like infection is one of the important cause where the you know, peritoneum is involved. Now, if the sac value is less than 1.1 and the, the, it is because of infection in the peritoneum, maybe because, because of bacterial peritonitis. It may be also be seen because of tubercular peritonitis, fungal peritonitis or HIV-associated. <music>